everybody, it's Tyler here at Riverbots High School, and I'm checking in with 3004A Cordy. Wow, they have a tier three climb. We just saw it happen on the practice field. It is absolutely incredible, and we can't wait to talk more about what's going into that. A lot of great things that go into this role. We talk about the inspiration behind that as well, too, and some cool solutions. They made this cool wing solution, make sure they can climb up and not swing correctly. We're talking about a PTO with it as well, a couple of macros and some other great stuff. We'll be learning more about Cordy coming up here on Bits and Parts. This video on fun is brought to you by viewers like you and also in partnership with the following. The Robotics Education and Competition Foundation provides fantastic programs for students from elementary school all the way through college. These include VEX, Aerial Drone Competition, Online Challenges, JROTC, Grow Powered, Scholarships, Certifications, and so much more. To discover these exciting opportunities, visit recf.org and get connected. Alex, let's talk about this tier three climb and some of the inspiration behind it. Where did you draw from in order to create something like this? And we'll be going more into kind of the whole structure for it. Yeah, so when we came into the season and we saw there was climb, we really looked into FRC because they've had a lot of elevation in the past, like FRC 2022. 20, so we, find a, we found a team called FRC 95, the Grasshoppers, and we, we looked at their climb with the active hooks here and the passive hooks, and we thought that is a really good way to, you know, climb in VRC because it's really doable. And then we saw it actualized in a VEX robot by some Taiwan team and we realized, wow, we should really get ahead of this. So around a month ago, we started developing this climb. So how does that translation work between going from, you know, taking inspiration from an FRC robot to utilizing VEX structure and creating it? Like what challenges were there to try to replicate and create something like that on this? So a lot of VEX parts aren't strong. As you can tell, this was really bent yesterday. And um, that was pretty much a, a, the biggest challenge we faced because all, all of the other structures are really you know, straightforward on the climb because it's just two arms that come up and come down. We thought of using poly hooks because they had machine metal hooks, but then we realized we didn't have time for that. And you know, the standoff hooks worked perfectly fine. So talk, talk to me more a little bit some of the structure. Let's deploy the climber up and see how that works and just kind of walk me through how that whole process of doing a climb actually works. So when we deploy the climb, we have the string resting here. And then once we deploy the climb, um, our rubber bands pull this back and our pistons pull this back so that the climb is ready to hook forward onto the bar. Yeah, so you guys are going up on the bars, you're going through multiple stages, right? So how does that stage for, how does that work for each stage then? So what we do is our winch pulls down this arm. So it's underneath the, uh, the passive hooks and then it lets up so that the passive hooks grab onto the bar. And then this goes back. I can't push the pistons. It goes back and then we put onto the next bar and then it drags down again. And I saw on practice field, it was about like 15 seconds or so, right? Is that what you try to target for the climb? We want it to be less than 15 seconds because sometimes it's not as viable in matches. And in skills, we want to have as much time to score other rings as possible as well. So we're aiming for sub 13 or even sub 10 seconds, but 15 seconds is what we have. Which I still think is plenty impressive as well too with it. Tyler, let's talk about, I noticed uh, when we were talking earlier, you mentioned this uh, wing solution uh, that you came up with here. So talk to me more about coming up with that, and then uh, as well to uh, utilizing a PTO for this also. Okay, so one of the main issues we encountered while building our hang is that the robot's natural center of gravity causes it to shift forward uh, while we're climbing the ladder. So this wing will keep us upright and parallel to the ground while we're climbing. So essentially what this does is it sort of uh, almost clamps onto the pole of the ladder. And this is gonna prevent it from shifting forward or any sort of swinging movement. And that allows us to stay parallel throughout the climbing process. Very cool. And in, from testing that, um, this just was overall the best design. Did you come up with any other potential designs for this type of wing at all or any other shapes maybe? Uh, we mostly just focused on the sort of like a triangle shape since triangles are the strongest. Sure. Uh, and we just, uh, one of the issues we may have encountered was where to mount the piston. So then ultimately we decided to put it on the drag chain here and we use zip ties uh, to maneuver it easier. And how about the PTO you have in robot? Tell, tell me more about that. Yeah, so since we don't have enough motors, of course, to uh, do a full climb, we had to resort to a PTO. So this allows us to shift a gear to connect with the drivetrain. Uh, and then using the drivetrain, uh, we, can, we can turn this, which will in turn uh, turn the spool to wind and unwind the string, and that's gonna allow us to climb. 
Uh, and were there any other issues that you guys had to work through and deal with in, in terms of the climber at all? So one more issue was that even with the wing, um, even uh, even with the wing, the robot would still tilt forward on the other side because you see how the wing hooks onto the vertical bar, but this side isn't supported, right? So this would still kind of go into the robot and then it would get stuck on the intake here. So we added these kind of shields that we've seen on Gremlin, they have polycarb shields, but we decided to add C-channel shields because we need it to be very strong. And then that just, you know, helped our robot, even though it still tilts a bit, it helps our robot actually get onto the next bar. Gonna wrap you up on this, uh, Ethan, on here. Uh, talking a little bit more of the macro that you've developed for the hang itself. Uh, and then I uh, also, we were talking earlier, you have an Auton selector you want to talk a little bit more about. Oh uh, yeah, so our macro is uh, pretty simple for the hang. Uh, so the driver starts by pressing uh, three buttons at once to stage a hang uh, that we showed earlier. Uh, the reason why it's so complicated is because we don't want the driver to accidentally be you know, staging the hang mid-match, right? So after it's staged, it'll end up like this. And the driver will press another button to bring it forward. and then. Once it's forward, they can press the same button they used to stage the hang to actually initiate the hang. And the hanging sequence is completely time-based because uh, we found that it was, it was good enough to get a fairly consistent hang. And uh, it was also much simpler to program. Uh, we, we just separate each hanging sequence into multiple segments. So we have uh, the initial winch in for as one sequence. We also have a winch out sequence. And then we have the, like, the, the sequence to evade the bar. And then by splitting this up into these three segments, we're able to you know, time each one accordingly and then allow us to have a very effective uh, and simple uh, hang macro. Uh, as for the autonomous selector, as you can see here, we have a very simple autonomous selector. Uh, it's still a work in progress as we plan to add more features, but you know, the main part is working. So by press, you can press this button and we have access to all these different autonomous that we have coded up. So but we can just press on a button and immediately switch to the autonomous that we want to run for the round. Uh, this, is be this is good because we don't have to you know, take our computer and upload the right autonomous every time we want to go up before the match. Another thing that, uh, that's pretty cool about our auton selector is that it reads and writes to the SD card. And by writing to the SD card, we're able to sort of save config configurations for future rounds. So that, you know, say we want to select, say we say we were uh, tuning you know, our, red, our, our red auton on the practice fields. You know, we, we, don't have to, we don't have to keep like uh, fiddling around with our brain uh, at the start of every round because everything is, all the configurations that we want is saved to the SD card and you know, it makes it pretty simple. Well, Freddy, first off, congratulations. Getting a tier three climb going is incredibly impressive in this game so far. I know you'll continue working on the iterations for that, so we can't wait to see what you come up with, as well as the uh, tournament win already and Judges Ward uh, back at Haunted too. So congrats on a great season so far. Can't wait to see how you do it. Thanks for sharing this incredible design. I know teams are gonna take a lot of inspiration from this. I wish you best of luck here at uh, Riverbots as well too. Thanks a lot, guys. This video on fun is brought to you by viewers like you and also in partnership with the following. The Robotics Education and Competition Foundation provides fantastic programs for students from elementary school all the way through college. These include VEX, Aerial Drone Competition, Online Challenges, JROTC, Girl Powered, Scholarships, Certifications, and so much more. To discover these exciting opportunities, visit recf.org and get connected.